Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeap.com. Well, I'm a little late putting out a video. I was uh, hoping to have one out a little sooner than this, but um, we had uh, some a nice storm followed by uh, snow and then uh, then more sleet followed by more snow. And, and where I live at in Tennessee, it's, uh, it's quite hilly. Now, it's not hilly like East Tennessee is, but there are a lot of big rolling hills and and um, so it's it's kind of a hazard uh, for um, you know people um, who have some experience driving on stuff like that. I moved here from Illinois, so I'm I'm not um, unaccustomed to snow and some ice and stuff. Um, but we get it so infrequent down here that um, it's a hazard um, to the local uh, f folks that have been here all their lives and and uh, and to. Um, people who migrated here from different parts of the country so anyway uh, as a result of that I've, I've spent uh, a lot of hours at work I work at a hospital and IT department um, I manage that and um, we had a situation where we had a lot of employees who couldn't make it in so I had a, a lot of uh, uh, 12 hour days there um, you know just doing my part so that's a uh, part of the reason but uh, I'll stop whining and complaining that's that's why uh, you haven't seen me here in a week and, and I'm, I'm hoping to continue uh, at least a weekly release of videos. So uh, there's a few things I'm going to talk about uh, today. I'll get as much as I can in this video and then the rest will be in the next video. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, some stuff that uh, some folks sent me and uh, and uh, just uh, some answers to some questions and I have a few more questions. So um, without further ado, let's uh, I'll reposition the camera and we'll take a look at that stuff. So a subscriber to the uh, channel, his name is Richard Cox, uh, lives up in Illinois, and um, Richard, uh, I think he goes by Rick, uh, was very, very kind and uh, made a couple parts uh, for me. Recall in a previous video that I'd ask about this release pen here, and um, you know, for pictures, and people had sent um, plenty of pictures of the of the pen for me well Richard uh, was kind enough to make one for me and uh, works works very well locks it in place Richard thank you uh, very very much but Richard didn't stop there as you recall he made a uh, a hinge pen so let me uh, get the camera in position we'll take a look at that so we have a look here uh, this is the hinge pen that uh, Richard made uh, fits very very well. It's got a knurled top to keep it from going all the way through. Very very functional, and uh, it's more like the original because if you recall, I had just a couple of uh, bolts and and nuts uh, in each uh, part of the hinge to keep the door on. So Richard, uh, thanks again, uh, buddy, Mr. Cox. I, I appreciate it. Um, again, you know, I just I'm overwhelmed by um, the uh, YouTube community and and the uh, the fellow creators and the subscribers. Uh, you guys make this all worthwhile. But I have one other thing that I want to um, uh, share with you here uh, regarding uh, Mr. Cox that uh, uh, another user had given me a tip about. So let me let me get in position and I'll show you. Recall that uh, Mr. Cox also sent along a few goodies and one of those was this uh, decimal equivalent chart and uh, drill sizes. And you know, I thought this was uh, so cool because you know I didn't have one of these and uh, and I'm very, very grateful to have one. But then I got an email from Mr. Art Eckstein. He says, hey, Joe, he says, uh, I don't know if you're aware of this, but if you go to uh, Stare at Sight, you can order um, that stuff uh, free of charge. They'll ship it to you free of charge. And, um, you know, there might be a limited quantity. You might have to uh, create an account. So I got on there, and sure enough, I got a, a metric equivalent chart. And another uh, decimal equivalent chart in the story of Starrett. They have other things on there. They have wall charts and stuff like that. So, um, for you guys unaware of that, uh, go over to Starrett.com and, and uh, uh, look in their uh, catalogs and shipping and stuff. And if I can remember, I'll put a link uh, down here below the video um, for you to go to. So anyway, uh, Mr. Cox, thanks for uh, share, uh, giving me that. And Art, uh, Mr. Eckstein, thank you so much for uh, sharing that uh, tidbit of information with me. I surely didn't know it, and uh, maybe there's others out there that didn't know it as well. Art also said if you look at uh, major suppliers of stuff, you'll see that uh, a lot of times they have freebie stuff like that that they'll give out. So, anyway, I just wanted to cover that and and uh, 
go from there. In my last video, I had uh, asked the question, hey, you know, my drive plate, my dog plate, should I, um, should I face that off so that it's truly perpendicular with the bed? And uh, I had a number of people comment on that, and uh, they make a very good point. I'm told that, uh, you know, because I had mentioned, uh, you know, turning between centers, and uh, initially that's what I intend to do. They said that if I'm, uh, you know, if you're turning between centers, there's really no sense to touch the plate because, well, you know, the, the plate has no effect on it. It's just driving the dog. However, you know, if I come to a point where I need to bolt something onto uh, this plate and it needs to be parallel both sides, then it may be worthwhile to take a uh, facing cut on here to see, see what we have. Now, uh, I don't intend to face off the plate unless I actually need it um, uh, to turn something parallel on the plate. But I am kind of curious uh, what, if any, run out is there. So I'm going to set up the indicator and let's take a look. Okay, so I've set the indicator uh, toward the outside rim of the face plate uh, to try to get as um, much air as I'm going to see um, with with this indicator. Now this is a cheap indicator and and. Uh, may not be the best uh, indicator to use, probably uh, uh, a tense indicator or something like that, or a half tense indicator would be better, but I don't have one of those. So anyway, I'm going to rotate this around, and we see that there is a little bit of play. It looks like there's about, uh, let's see what we got there. It's about, uh, let's see if I can zoom in on this a little more. Okay, so we're at about, uh, Two thou there. Looks like it pumps up three positive. And coming back down. So we're about two negative. Two to three negative. So you know we're about six thou out um, uh, out of uh, perpendicularity, I guess, to the bed. So I guess if I were to uh, need to. Uh, face something parallel on this plate probably uh, would have to take just a very light facing cut to make sure that it was uh, level but I think I, before I would do that I would try to get a better indicator uh, than what I have uh, to, to see if I can get a better measurement and maybe a better indicator holder um, I really need to maybe get a knockoff of a Noga, or, uh, Noga uh, holder or something like that those just seem so much easier to locate and and put in position so anyway that's the uh, I was just kind of curious of what the run out would be, and it looks like, you know, I'm guessing about maybe six, seven thousandths, you know, so if, um, if I needed to, then I probably would have to uh, put a light facing cut on it to, um, to true it up. But since I'm turning between centers, it doesn't matter. All right, so let's move on. So I think in the last video, um, I showed this T-nut that Jeremy Gagnon was uh, kind enough to make for me uh, to fit my quick change tool post, and... Uh, I uh, had to make a spacer, so I made I made a little spacer here. Now this is not quite thick enough. Uh, probably could just be round like a washer. I think I'm going to find another piece that's uh, um, about uh, three sixteenths of an inch instead of eight, uh, eighth inch uh, to make space from. Although this works and it clears, it's just a feels just a little tight to me. Now I still have to um, I still have to. Uh, lock tight the stud into the nut, but uh, we are we can we are to a point where we can move or, or uh, you know use the use the tool and you know of course I have some um, tooling so we're getting pretty close here um, to um, uh, making chips. I've got a few other questions and things, but um, um, I'll cover those here in just a few minutes. But uh, getting really close, guys, and I couldn't do with you and Jeremy. Uh, thank you again, sir. I uh, appreciate it so much that you helped me out that way. I appreciate all you guys uh, and all that you've done for me. It's a, uh, it's a blessing. It really is. So, All right, so I'm going to position the camera so we can see the back gears, and I have a question and a demonstration, so I'll show that. Okay, so hopefully uh, I don't get in the way of what it is I'm trying to show here. So I had a uh, subscriber uh, from the Netherlands, and if I'm pronouncing his name right, it's uh, Giavin. And uh, Giving said, hey, um, I have a problem with my back gears rolling out of, out of uh, uh, contact. 
And, uh, you know, I've noticed that on mine too, but I only notice on that on mine when I have it in the high speed. Now, the motor pulley can be in high or low, it doesn't matter, but when I'm on the high speed of back gears, right now the back gears are engaged, I'm going to turn this on. And if we look, you can see that the back gears are slowly walking out, okay? So, um, I suspect that the problem that I'm having is that uh, my, there's a, a pair of uh, spring, curved spring washers under these two collars, one on each side. This one here is probably not visible from this camera angle. But those uh, collars press up against um, those springs and the springs then push up against these castings here. And then that provides the resistance to keep them from walking out. Now mine are probably almost tight enough, but I don't think they are tight enough. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna attempt to uh, tighten those up, and I'm gonna do that by loosening the collar and pushing it harder against the the curved spring here to see if that alleviates my problem. Um, and then I'm gonna come back and test it. And then I have another question about these back gears that I think some of you guys can uh, help answer. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so I've uh, loosened the collars and pushed them up tighter against the castings. Now, my uh, back gear lever is quite a bit more stiff. So, let's uh, engage the belt here and back gears are engaged. Let's turn it on and see what happens. Okay, so... It looks like it's still kind of trying to back out a little bit, although it's kind of staying in place. So I think mine will probably be okay. But now, um, Gibbon had a suggestion on a fix, and I thought maybe I'd throw it out there and see what you guys thought. So if this is a real problem, okay, where the back gears want to roll out of and disengage, and you've tightened up these collars as tight as you can get them, and they still want to disengage, uh, what's a possible for, uh, fix for that? Okay. Now, Gibbon suggests that uh, maybe drilling a hole in this casting, right? Uh, putting a spring and a ball, and then drilling a dimple in the lock position of the uh, collar would then, you know, positively engage it um, so that it can't, can't disengage. Um, now another thing that uh, on my lathe, the oil hole where you would lubricate, uh, this side where my thumb is has been threaded, right? And there was a, a bolt in there, so I don't know if that was uh, there to put pressure on it because it would roll out or what. But anyway, those are the questions and, um, and uh, what do you think about Gibbons, a Gibbons fix about drilling a hole in the uh, shaft casting, putting in a spring and a ball, and drilling a dimple in the shaft collar in the lock position. So, um, what are your thoughts? So, um, now uh, I got, got a couple other things I want to go over, and then probably going to end this video because, uh, you know, try not to make these things too long and, and, uh, and uh, you know, not bore you guys to death. So, let me reposition the camera and I'll be right back. So, I had a user, his name is Steven Erbach, um, if I'm saying his last name is right, had uh, emailed me and said, hey, I think that your video has been helpful enough that it encouraged me to uh, um, pull apart my cross slide and clean it and uh, try to take care of some of the slop. And while he had it apart, he uh, made a new brass nut. And uh, he says, well, while I was making brass nuts, I thought I'd make you a new one. So Steven Erbach. Uh, sent this to me. Uh, Steven, thank you so much, buddy. Um, it's, it's, it's beautiful, isn't it? I mean, it's a very, very nice, clean job. Uh, everything is well broken, and uh, the corners, you know, there's no, no sharpness to it. Just uh, You almost hate to put it somewhere and hide it, you know? But uh, the uh, what I plan on doing in uh, maybe the next video is I'm going to look and see how much backlash uh, we have in the uh, crossfeed screw and I know that I have a place on my crossfeed screw that's quite worn but now will it uh, 
will it improve it? So I know the nut that I have is quite worn too. And uh, the brass nuts I think wear faster than the, the steel um, uh, the steel screw does. So um, this is a this is a, a wonderful gift. Steven, thank you so much, man. Uh, you guys rock. All of you guys just absolutely rock. I can't uh, I can't say um, uh, enough good things about you. Um, but you know why I have you here? Um, you know, I finally decided that uh, I was going to uh, maybe monetize my channel, right? Thinking that, well, if there's whatever few pennies that um, YouTube pays you for your videos, that it would, uh, you know, maybe I could put that toward uh, some tooling or, or something, you know, just to kind of, you know, offset the money that I spend and, and, uh, um, and stuff like that. So, you know, when I went to do that, um, you know, YouTube says, uh, well, you got to have 10,000 views right in order to monetize your videos well I had 67,000 views right so I'm thinking well hey I've got plenty enough views let's try it so I go through all the effort and then um, this is about three weeks ago and then uh, you know uh, they're saying well we're uh, it takes about a week to review and then I got a, a message there that says well we're we're way behind so you know we'll probably be late January and then bang they decided to uh, move the go post and say, well, you got to have 4,000 hours of, um, of view time in the last 12 months and 1,000 subscribers. Well, I missed the hours by, you know, nearly 2,000 hours, and I missed the uh, subscriber mark uh, um, by over 500 subscribers, right? Like 535, I think, the last time I looked. So, look, hey, that's, uh, that's okay, because at least at this point, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to make money off of YouTube. It's, it's, it's not why I'm doing this. Uh, I uh, am more interested in the relationships that I've developed with uh, some of the viewers and the other creators, and, and that's what's really important to me. So, um, if, uh, if you want to like and subscribe, that'd be great. I appreciate it. Um, I'm still going to try to get there, but uh, I don't expect to get there anytime soon. So, anyway, let's move on. I have another question here for you, and uh, I think that maybe you guys can uh, um, help me uh, figure out where to go with it. Now, my motor, I haven't taken a close look at it yet. I don't know if it's reversible or not, okay? Um, if it's not, I think I want to try to find a single phase, um, or maybe they call it a split phase, you know, uh, motor. Uh, that's reversible and I would be looking for a single phase drum switch um, to reverse that with. Uh, right now there's the headstock you know only has the uh, toggle switch on it, turn it uh, on or off, it rotates in one direction and there are probably or there may not be many uh, instances where I actually want to run it in reverse but you know I've, I've come this far why not uh, go all the way, right? So um, what I'm asking is, do any of you guys know um, where I would start looking for or the best place to get a single phase uh, reversing drum switch uh, to use for a motor, you know, to reverse the motor on the lathe? Um, that'd be helpful. So I, I appreciate any input you can get uh, from there. Um, I think I might, uh, you know, make another uh, small little piece of packing to sit on top of this, and then once I have the lathe running, I think I'm just going to make a, a heavy washer that's the right thickness and, and it's a round diameter instead of using the aluminum plate like I've done on the tool post. Uh, uh, Steven uh, Erbach, thank you again for the uh, cross feed nut that's going to be uh, uh, featured here in an upcoming video. Uh, Jeremy Gagnon, thank you so much for the uh, the uh, making the the T nut for my quick change tool post. So we're getting even closer there. Uh, Richard Cox, uh, uh, thank you for uh, the the parts, the latch, and the hinge pin. Uh, man, I'm just uh, I'm almost speechless here. So anyway, uh, that's about it for this video. Um, I hope you guys uh, are staying warm. We've had cold snaps all over the country. And, and uh, look out for each other. Be kind to each other. And uh, other than that, have a blessed day.